the first of three books entitled of occult philosophy or magic written by that famous man Henry Cornelius Agrippa Knight what do you do good for you book one natural magic Chapter 1 How magicians collect virtues from the threefold world is declared in these three books. Seeing that there is a threefold world, elementary, celestial, and intellectual, and every inferior is governed by its superior, and receiveth the influence of the virtues thereof, so that the very original and chief worker of all doth by angels, the heavens, stars, elements, animals, plants, metals, and stones convey from himself the virtues of his omnipotency upon us for whose service he made and created all these things. Wise men conceive it no way irrational that it should be possible for us to ascend by the same degrees through each world to the same very original world itself the maker of all things and first cause from whence all things are and proceed and also to enjoy not only these virtues but which already in the more excellent kind of things but also besides these to draw new virtues from above. Hence it is that they seek after the virtues of the elementary world, through the help of physic and natural philosophy and the various mixtins of natural things, then of the celestial world, in the rays and the influence thereof, according to the rules of astrologers and the doctrines of mathematicians, joining the celestial virtues to the former. Moreover, they ratify and confirm all these with the powers of divers intelligences through the sacred ceremonies of religions. The order and process of all these I shall endeavor to deliver in these three books whereof the first contains natural magic, the second celestial, and the third ceremonial. But I know not whether it be an unpardonable presumption in me that I, a man of so little judgment and learning, should in my very youth so confidently set upon a business so difficult, so hard and intricate as this is, whereover Wherefore, whatsoever things have here already, and shall afterward be said by me, I would not have any assent to them, nor shall I myself any further than they shall be proved, approved of by the universal church and the congregation of the faithful. What magic is? Chapter 2. What are the parts thereof? And how the professors thereof must be qualified? Magic is a faculty of wonderful virtue, full of most high mysteries, containing the most profound contemplation of most secret things together with the nature, power, quality, substance, and virtues thereof, as also the knowledge of whole nature, and it doth instruct us concerning the differing and agreement of things amongst themselves, whence it produceth its wonderful effects 
by uniting the virtues of things through the application of them one to the other and to the inferior suitable subjects joining and knitting them together thoroughly by the powers and virtues of the superior bodies. This is the most perfect and chief science. That sacred and sublimer kind of philosophy and lastly, the most absolute perfection of all, most excellent philosophy. Foreseeing all that regulative philosophy is divided into natural, mathematical, and theological. Natural philosophy teacheth the nature of those things which are in the world, searching and inquiring into causes, effects, times, places, fashions, events, their wholes and parts. Also, the number and nature of things called elements, what fire, earth, air forth brings from whence the heavens their beginnings had whence tied whence rainbow in gray colors clad what makes the clouds that gathered are and black to send forth lightnings and the thundering crack what doth the night new flames and comets make? What makes the earth to swell and then to quake? What is the soul of the metals and the gold? What virtues wealth doth nature coffer hold? All these things doth natural philosophy, the viewer of nature, contain, teaching us according to visuals muse, Whence all things flow, whence mankind, beast, whence fire, whence rain and snow, whence earthquakes are, why the whole ocean beats, over his blanks and then again retreats, whence strengths of herbs, whence courage, rage of brutes, all kinds of stone, of creeping things and fruits. But mathematical philosophy teaches us to know the quantity of natural bodies as extended into three dimensions, as also to conceive of the motion and course of celestial bodies. As in great haste, what makes the golden star smart so fast? To what makes the moon sometimes to mask her face? The sun also, as if in some disgrace. And as Virgil sings, how the sun doth rule with the two zodiac signs, the orb that's measured round about the nines, it doth the heaven starry wig make known, the strange ellipses of the sun and the moon, archers also, suns, saws, rain, seven stars, like was Charles and Wayne, why won't the suns make towards west so fast, what makes night so long early to be? Past. All which are understood by mathematical philosophy. Hence by the heavens we may foreknow in the heavens, seasons, all times for the reap and sow, and when tis fit launch into deep, and when the war, and when the peace to sleep, and when to dig up trees, and them again to set that they may bring forth they may. New theological philosophy or divinity teaches what God is, what mind and what intelligence, what an angel, what a devil, what a soul, the religion, what sacred institutions, rites, temples, observations, and sacred mysteries are. It instructs us also concerning faith, miracles, and virtues of words and figures and secret operations and mysteries and of seals. And as Apelios saith, it teaches us rightly to understand and to be skilled in the celestial laws, the equity of holy things, and rule of religions, but to recollect thyself. <clears throat> These three 
principal faculties. Magic comprehends, unites, and accurates. Deservedly, therefore, was it the ancients esteemed as the highest and the most sacred philosophy. It was, as we find, brought to light by most sage authors and most famous writers, amongst which particularly Zek, Psalmazis, and Zoroaster were so famous that many believed they were many believed they were investors of the science. The track Abarius, the Hyperborean, Charimodus, Damagerian, Euxodus, Hermippus followed. There were also other eminent choice men, as Mercurius, Tresmegistus, Polyphyrius, Amabicius, Plotinus, Proclus, Dardanus, Orpheus, the Thoracian, Gog, the Gracian, Germa, the Babylonian, Apollonosius, the Tyania, the uh, Osthenius also wrote excellently on this art, whose books being, as it were, lost, Democritus of Abadura recovered and set them forth with his own commentaries. Besides Pythagoras and Pedicolus, Democritus, Plato, and many other renowned philosophers traveled far by sea to learn this art, and being returned, published it with wonderful devotees esteemed of it is a great secret. Also, it is well known that Pythagoras and Plato went to the prophets of Memphis to learn it and traveled through almost all Syria, Egypt, Judea, and the schools of Chaldeans that they might not be ignorant of the most sacred memorials and records of magic as also what they might be furnished with divine things. Whatsoever. Therefore, is the serious des er desire us desirous to study in this faculty. If he be not skilled in natural philosophy, wherein are discovered the qualities of things, and in whence are found the occult properties of every being, and if he not be skillful in the mathematics and in the aspects of the figures of the stars upon which depends the sublime virtues and property of everything and if he be not learned in theology wherein are manifested those immaterial substances which dispense and minister all things he cannot possibly able to understand the rationality of magic for there is no work that is done by mere magic, nor any work that is merely magical, that doth not comprehend these three faculties. Chapter 3 Of the Four Elements, Their Qualities, and Mutual Mixtions there are four elements and original grounds of all corporal things. Fire, earth, water, air, of which all elemented inferior bodies are compounded, not by way of heaping them up together, 
but by transmutation and union, and when they are destroyed, they are resolved into elements. For there is none of these sensual elements that is pure, but they are more or less mixed, and apt to be changed one into the other, even as earth becoming dirty and being dissolved becomes water, and the same being made thick and hard becometh earth again, but being evaporated through heat passeth into air, and that being kindled passeth into fire, and this being extinguished reserves, returns back into air, but being cooled again after its burning becomes earth, or stone, or sulfur, and this is manifested by lightning. Plato was of that opinion, that earth was wholly changeable. And that the rest of the elements are changed as into this, into one another successively. But is the opinion of this subtler sort of philosophers that earth is not changed, but relented and mixed with other elements, which do dissolve it, and that it returns back into itself again. Now every one of the elements hath two specific qualities, the former whereof is retained as proper to itself, and the other as a means it agrees with which comes after next it. For fire is hot and dry, the earth dry and cold, water cold and moist, the air moist and hot. And so after this matter of the elements according to the two contrary qualities are contrary one to the other as fire to water and earth to air. Moreover, the elements are upon another account opposite one to the other. For some are heavy as earth and water and others are light as air and fire. Wherever the Stoics called the former passives and the later actives. And yet once again, Plato distinguished Sift them after one another, and it signs to every one of them three qualities, viz. to the fire brightness, thinness, and motion, but to the earth darkness, thickness, and quietness. And according to these qualities of the earth and fire, earth are contrary. But the other elements borrow their qualities from these, so that the air receive the two qualities of the fire thinness and motion, and one, the earth, viz, the darkness, and the matter water receives two qualities of the earth, darkness and thickness, and one, fire, viz, motion, but fire is twice more thin than air thrice more movable and four times more bright and the air is twice more bright thrice more thin and four times more movable than water wherefore water is twice more bright than earth thrice more thin and four times more movable And therefore the fire is to the air, so air is to the water, and water is to the earth, and again, as the earth is to the water, so is the water to the air, and the air to the, is the fire, and this is the root and foundation of all bodies, natures, virtues, and wonderful works. And he which shall know these qualities of the elements and their mixations shall easily bring to pass such things that are wonderful and astonishing and shall be perfect. And this is the root and foundations of all bodies, natures, virtues, and wonderful works. And he which shall know these qualities of the elements and their mixations shall easily bring to pass such things that are wonderful and astonishing and shall be perfect in magic. And this is the root and foundation of all bodies, natures, virtues, and wonderful works. And he which shall know these qualities of the elements and their mixtures shall easily bring to pass such things that are wonderful and astonishing and shall be perfect in magic.